at each uh, hatchery. So that way you can continue to inject larva. And they do provide sort of a minimal level of defense. I mean, you know, a queen can generally fight off a void ray, uh, stuff like that. And you'll see the queens also do, do benefit from the attack upgrades uh, that are researched from the evolution chamber. So very important to go ahead and upgrade your units pretty much at all points of the game as, you know, they're just so powerful. So... We do have the Ultralisk Cavern here complete, and before I make an Ultralisk, I'm just going to go ahead and point out, since I built this building away from the rest of my uh, my base, this does have, Ultralisks do have the ability to get an upgrade that gives plus two armor to all, uh, all Ultralisks, so I'm going to go ahead and fire that up, and going to go ahead and get some more uh, drones working on gas here so I can pump out an Ultralisk or two. Like I said earlier, um, you were able to upgrade the Greater Spire. So I uh, let me see if I can find my uh, my cr uh, corruptor here. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so corruptor can now move morph into brutal lord. It does cost two additional food, so you need to keep that in mind when you are going uh, to get brutal lords. You don't want to make 200 supply worth of corruptors because then you're not going to be able to make them into brutal lords. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you to morph into an egg, and hopefully when he is done, we will have a Brood Lord. And uh, they're actually one of my favorite units in StarCraft 2. They're just so powerful. And since I have three more larvae here, I am going to go ahead and put these on this gas. And I'll make another, I'll make another video that focuses on how to effectively get your economy going as quick as possible, as I you know, obviously have not been doing that for this, for this particular tutorial. But, you know, there's so much other stuff I wanted to cover and put emphasis on. I did not also want to have to do that, you know, going at the speed at which you would normally have to in a normal game. Because, really, I mean, for a new player, seeing somebody move around with, you know, really high APM um, just would throw them off completely and they'd get lost and flustered and a good time would not be had. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the Brood Lord now. This is the, uh, this is the flying guy. He is the Zerg kind of artillery, uh, aerial artillery unit. He does have two little broodings that uh, he sends down. These actually serve a really neat purpose. I will show you here right now on this Nidus network. He sends them down, and they kind of fly down here and start doing a lot of damage. More importantly, though, they act as a frontline defense. So since you've got these broodings down, you'll see they only last for like 10 seconds or something. They can... they can, uh, the um, Brutal Lords constantly produce these things, and they'll constantly throw them down, and they act as a kind of biological wall against any sort of uh, land unit, like marine, like a marine ball or whatnot. So they do also have a very long attack range, 9.5, so you can see he's all the way back here, and he'll fly up a little bit to attack it, but you'll see that he does have really long range, and he's, he is able to attack these rocks from a good distance away. And if you have a bunch of Brutal Lords, they will be flinging these things down non-stop, these Brutalings, and they will make it very difficult for the opponent to actually reach the Brutal Lords. So, make sure you keep that in mind um, when going for these things. Make sure you use the Brutal Lords effectively. You don't want to just send these things in here you know, on the move command, and then be two feet away from, you know, we'll pretend this is a marine ball, and because now the marines will be able to just rip this thing up. So even though it is armored, it is massive, it still can die pretty easily, and that is what the broodlings are for, to kind of protect it and provide a meat wall shield thingy for it. So, we do have uh, our base coming along. It's pretty much done here. I'm going to go ahead and keep injecting larva. You'll see that I do have the ability to make ultralisks now. So I'm going to go ahead and move these overlords as they are kind of cluttering up my vision just a little bit. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, if you if you build a whole bunch of overlords and you don't move them, you'll see my rally point is right here. So now I've got all these overlords here, and when they expand out, you see how much, how much space they take up. You cannot see anything down beneath, beneath them now. So very important that you continuously move your overlords away from the rally point in location. So... Go ahead and make some ultras now. These are the uh, the big tank units of the Zerg. Uh, take a crap ton of damage, especially since we've gotten the armor upgrade. And we'll wait for those to build, as they do take a good long time. They take over a minute to build, actually. Um, however, they originally you you really you, you wouldn't you would not really see them too much, as they were able to be mind controlled, stunned, and whatnot. But as the beta progressed, the um, 
uh, Blizzard actually went ahead and kind of made them immune to stun effects and whatnot. Um, so still very good units. You will probably see them used more in StarCraft 2 as the retail comes out here in just a couple days, which I'm very much looking forward to. It actually kind of sucks. I had quite a few used map settings maps that I wanted to show you guys before the, uh, before the retail went live. But because most of them use a third or first person camera, which Blizzard for whatever reason broke in this la latest patch, um, not really able to uh, show you guys. Really disappointed in that. So I will hopefully be able to show you guys those units when the game goes live on Tuesday, July 27th. And here is the mighty Ultralisk. These guys are the tank for the Zerg, as you can tell. Uh, giant, giant blades on them. Very menacing looking. And one thing from StarCraft 2, you will notice... Oh, here's that, uh, um... On a, on a side note, here's that immune to stairs, snare, stun, and mind control effects. So, pretty much, if you've got a whole bunch of vultures coming at you, there's not really going to be a way for you to stop them unless you have a big wall of barracks or something. Um, anyways, this is the uh, burrow ability, which you will see is new in StarCraft 2 for the ultra specifically. It does look a little funny, but uh, yeah, they definitely can burrow, so you can surprise people with ultras. And I'm going to go ahead and send these down here, just to hang out with the rest of our Zerg army. So, I'm pretty sure that covered everything. Let me just go ahead and double check here. Yep, we got Mutas, we got Corruptors, Ultras, Infestors, Hydras, Roaches, Drones, Overlords, and Zerglings. We covered Banings, we covered Broodlords. Just about done with the upgrades here. I think I actually... Oh, um, okay, so there's a couple other upgrades that come available to you as you uh, progress through the tiers. You'll see I, I do have a Hive right now, which is the highest tier building for Zerg. Uh, you'll see the Spawning Pool now has a uh, Adrenal Glands upgrade for Zerg. Increases the attack speed of Zerglings by 20%. Gonna go ahead and get that. Very important to get that if you do plan to have Zerglings um, as a main component of your army for whatever reason. So, also, like I said earlier at the Spire, you can attack... You can increase the attack and armor capabilities of the flying units in the Zerg arsenal. So, going to go ahead and finish out the uh, the upgrades here for the Zerg. And, let's see, I think I pretty much covered everything here in terms of the absolute basics. Um, yeah, so this is pretty much what the Zerg army looks now, like now in StarCraft II. Um, pretty diverse. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, as I will go ahead and work on making a Protoss Basics video as well. Um, I want to kind of focus on Zerg and Protoss first, since I'm assuming the retail of StarCraft II will have a very good tutorial for the Terrans. Um, you know, as the whole thing is pretty much based on, you know, their campaign and the story of the Terran. So, I'm going to go ahead and make this tutorial's base in the Zerg and Protoss, so that way when you do decide multiplayer with your friends or on Battle.net, you are not completely lost when, uh, when you spawn as either of them. And, uh, I'll go ahead and also be making tutorials on how to handle your economy effectively, and pretty much just covering everything you need to survive in the world of Battle.net. So, again, thank you very much for watching the video, and I will see you guys later.